is now back on the bottom of the list. The poorest country in the world, and according to the United Nations, the worst place to live. You would have a hard time convincing the nomads of this. They live with joy in their harsh environment, proud of their traditions, loving their children, and the freedom of their mobile lives. The Nomad Foundation has been working in Niger for 12 years. We dig wells, build and support schools, start cereal banks and women's cooperatives, and work in general with the nomads to find out how we can work together to improve their lives. Seeking to balance cultural tradition with economic opportunity. These experiences have led us to the construction of the Tamasna Center for Nomadic Life. Located on the annual migration route of all nomads in Niger, the Tamasna Center will provide essential services and be available to the nomads without requiring that they settle down. With the help of two major partners, the Rotary Club and the Great Escape Foundation, Phase one of the Thomasna Center, a medical clinic, the first for nomads, opened in September. After almost three years of absence due to political instability, I was able to return in August to check on all the hard work our Niger representative, Sidi Maman, had been doing in my absence, especially the construction of the medical clinic. But we had also been rehabilitating a well and installing a pump, a water tank, solar panels, and latrines. On arrival, I started ordering furniture, equipment, locally available medicines, and preparing for the arrival of four American volunteers. So we headed out for the opening of the clinic. The best way to announce to the nomads that something important is happening is to announce a festival. Word has always spread quickly in the nomadic community, but now it is even easier because the nomads have cell phones. here last week and now there's somebody camped under every tree. The nomads arrived however they could, by camel, by donkey, by motorcycle, or on foot. But they came, an estimated 2,000 of them. And when we arrived, the fet was in full swing. <laughs> we had to rush to camp to don our party attire. <laughs> Hello. That's Hello. it. That was easy. festival is uh, complete without the electric guitar, a little Tuareg shuffle. And even the camels love the dance. But the next morning, the work started in earnest, and the patients were already waiting. The team consisted of our chief advisor, an American Rotarian, Dr. Bob Skanke, a doctor and three nurses from Niger, and three American volunteers. 
All the Americans came loaded with vitamins and medicines, and after we had stocked our shelves, we were ready to receive patients. And there were plenty of them. In Dr. Bob's office, the consultations were in five languages. After seeing a doctor, they went to the pharmacy to get their medicine and have it explained in a language they could understand. Every day at lunchtime, we would go back to our camp, sit under a tree, and enjoy a salad. It became obvious as we watched the nomads pass by with thousands of animals on their annual migration why this was the most important and accessible place to locate a center for nomadic life. Those afternoons spent sitting at the table, watching the herds, talking about the morning's work, taking pictures, were some of the most relaxing moments of the mission. But sometimes not. The rains had not finished. If an afternoon squall came through, our tents could not withstand the winds. But we were able to refuge in our more sturdy Tuareg tent, and then enjoy the cool after. Each day as we returned to work, it seemed there were more patients than the day before. But I was happy to see many old friends. <laughs> and equally happy to meet new ones. Some of the patients were reluctant, but they usually came around in the end. In eight days, we treated 553 patients. We dispensed 92 pairs of glasses donated by Eyes on Africa. Many people we could help, and many people we could not. In this vast area of 50,000 square miles, where there is not one doctor, many of our patients had never been to a doctor. For them, this clinic and this mission was a miracle. In minutes, our nomadic home for two weeks was dismantled, and the camels moved into our camp to reclaim their rightful place. A second medical mission took place in March 2010. When I arrived in early February, the construction of a residence for our volunteers and a training and meeting facility for the nomads was stalled. We had a problem with our well. We had to send a well digger down 150 feet to dig the well out another 20 feet so that our solar-powered pump had enough water to function. Without water, no buildings, no garden, no mission, no clinic. Although the facility won't be finished until September, by the time the volunteers arrived, we had the rooms installed, and we had much more comfortable accommodations than the last mission in tents. 
Dr. Skanky was determined to improve our diagnostic capabilities. Fresh from a course at the World Health Organization, he brought new equipment. This woman who walked in to thank us for curing her eight months of paralysis with vitamins helped assure that we had plenty of patients. But our reputation for working miracles brought its own problems. Patients arrived whom even the hospitals couldn't help. This man had suffered several years of partial paralysis, evidently from a stroke. All we could do was demonstrate to his family how to move his arms and legs and do physical therapy to prevent further atrophy of his muscles. After treating 854 patients, we took the team on the road to visit the schools that we support. We checked the kids, distributed medicine chests, we spoke to future presidents, teachers, and nurses, and greeted old friends. The Thomas Knott Clinic, permanently staffed by a full-time nurse, has treated 2,500 patients to date. It is already being heralded as the most important project ever completed in the region. But it is just the beginning. Future plans include a boarding school so nomads can have the education they deserve. Vaccination corrals to ensure herd health. A microcredit bank to encourage women's cooperatives and small business. Cereal and fodder banks to ensure food security. A productive garden to provide the vitamins that we now carry in our suitcases. But the heart of Thomas Na is information. Training in such new fields for the nomads as environmental rehabilitation, pasture management, agriculture, preventative health, and internet access to the rest of the world. But the key to the future of Thomas Na is you. Volunteer. Bring the nomads your expertise, your energy, your ideas. Or make a donation to the Nomad Foundation and be a part of a bright future for one of the oldest ways of life on the planet. <laughs> Ka